Hey, good morning ladies and gentlemen, hope you're good. Welcome back to day two on No Man's Land Farming Simulator 2022. Uh, we're just going to recap exactly what happened yesterday, talk about what we're going to do today in this video. So yesterday we cut down a few trees, we sorted out our farm, our initial farm, our plot land, and we just basically cleaned up a bit of our equipment. We bought the, uh, the Karcher and we, we had a little look around the farm and got used to everything. So that was yesterday. Today we're just going to look over what we need to do to finish the field here. So it says here there are some weeds. Now there's actually not that many weeds if we look. It's just a little line here. There's some weeds so we can get rid of those. It also says we need lime but unfortunately we can't put lime down now because the crops as we can see have started to grow. So we're going to have to wait until next season to put the lime down. Also we have no fertilizer so we could do the fertilizing. So I will show you how that works. Um, we'll get the... We'll get the lime and we'll get the fertilizer and we'll put it down. Even though we can't lime, we're going to put it down. We're going to go through the motion. I should have done it yesterday. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. Um, I did actually pop to the shop this morning. The recording didn't work at the very beginning of the video, but I hired this weeder. I actually pressed P. I checked the used shop to see if there are any good items. There wasn't. Uh, nothing here that we need. I went to tools. I went down to weeders, which are here and I looked at the different options so this one which is six meters uh, for 9,500 and then the next option well this is nine meters 51,000 so for an extra three meters that's a lot of money this one also nine meters but it's a weeder and a seeder so it seeds as well um, and there's that option this is a little bit bigger but double the money and then we can go on and, and on from there we don't need all this at the moment, that's a bit overkill. For us, this is absolutely fine. We don't need to buy this right now, because we don't need to spend that money. So we went ahead and we leased it. For, I think it was like £450. I then went to the shop and I picked it up. So I have it here. And so all we need to do to use this, is we just press V to lower it, and we drive forward. And that's it, it's as simple as that. And that will now remove any small weeds. It only works on small weeds. And so if you don't deal with the weeds quick enough, and they become medium or large weeds, then you're going to need to use things like herbicides and uh, chemicals to remove them. But for small weeds, this works absolutely fine. And you're going to see this now. So visually, as we kind of roll over these, they will disappear. Also, we have crop destruction turned on, meaning that we will destroy our crops if we don't do this in the first stage. So on stage one of growth, we can go over the crops. It's absolutely fine. Once the crops have started to grow, if we actually go over them, we're going to destroy them. So we want to make sure we don't do that. And But that's it. We've now successfully just de-weeded our farm. We're also starting to see some of the areas we missed. There was a little bit where we, we missed some seeding. And, but yeah. That's, uh, that's all there is to the weeder. It's very simple to use. And again, a tool that will come in handy. Now, when you cultivate a la the land, you don't typically need uh, to do this. You don't need to de weed. But because we had the additional land, which we ploughed, uh, we needed to deal with the weeds for that. So just bear in mind when you're cultivating land, when you're ploughing land, um, some of it's going to need weeding, some of it won't. There we go. We can see how that works. All right, that's done. We're going to press P. Go back to our lease and we can re uh, remove that. Clicking on it and return. <clears throat> That's now going to go back to the shop. Nice. Alright, so the next thing that we need to consider is the fertilizing and the lime. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the weight off the front here. Okay, and actually no, I don't need to. I can leave that on. It's fine. Normally I would have the weight on the back. And the other thing that we did, and I'm going to show you this right now, and unfortunately, as I said, we missed it at the start of the video, is when we went to the shop to pick up the weeder, we took a log with us. The reason we did that was because that was just being a bit more uh, effective. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to remove this. That is not what I wanted to remove. Uh, bear with me a second. Let me just pick that back up again. I'm going to press the G key so I can uh, attach the weight. I'm actually going to drop the weight uh, there. I'm then going to spin around, and the reason I'm going to do this is because I'm going to pick up a, a log to take with me to sell. The first log we sold, we made about 2,000, 
Just over £2,000 when we sold it. And I will try not to record video, uh, to do content off of stream, off of video. Um, but the recording wasn't working, unfortunately, so we just lost the first kind of hour of the day. But here we are. So what we're going to do now, because we've got the weight on the back, we should just simply be able to come up to this. The way that we're going to do this, I did actually cut it to take a bit before. And so you'll see this actually weighs, it's about 1.4 ton. The last one that we sold weighed 2 ton. So what we do in order to pick this up is we just drive forward. There are two ways you can do it. You can either bring this down, you can drive forward to scoop. You have to angle it slightly to do that. Uh, you can try and scoop and pick it up this way and then tilt it. That is an option. In fact, let me just jump out here because the bit there that we missed. And that is an option. That is something you can do. But sometimes you have to uh, play about with it, juggle it about to get it in. It can work. But what we're going to do, I'm going to show you a different way. So what I like to do is I like to drive up to where I'm going to be picking up this log. I like to go over the front of it like this, and I like to tilt. Oh, I like to tilt like this, so I'm directly over the top of it, like so. I then like to uh, drop down this until you can just start to see the front wheel ever so slightly raise. And if you're in the right place, it will look something like this. Then I just close it. That's it. Very simple. I just close it. And in doing that, if I spin this up, there we go. We've now closed this, and it's in. And because we have the counterbalance on the back, it stops us from tilting. If we were to move with this, and lift, and it was too heavy, and we lifted it too high, the way that the weight distribution works, if I now start to move, and I kind of stop suddenly, uh, it's not too bad because this isn't that heavy, but what you'd normally see is we tip over. And obviously we don't want to do that, so, yeah, weight distribution is a thing. We can, you can see us now, we're wobbling from left to right. Probably because we haven't got this right in the middle. It's not the uh, best place to pick this up. But yeah, the idea is if you don't want to tip over or if you're struggling with weight, keep it relatively low to the ground. I want to make sure I don't hit the building. Bit of a large stick. And we're going to take this up to sell it. Again, ideally, you want to try and be in the middle if you can help it, or you could simply just cut the end off of it if it's a bit of a problem. Um, but we're going to be absolutely fine. We can get up there with this, no problem at all. We're doing our 25 miles an hour, so it's not affecting us in any way. Excellent. And then when we get to the shop, we're going to purchase the fertilizer, the lime. Uh, we, will, we will purchase both, and I'll show you the machine we're going to use to do that. Now, uh, I want to mention again, we can't lime right now because we need to do that before the crop starts to grow. But something else we're going to do today is we're actually going to uh, cultivate a new field. And so when we do that, when we cultivate a new field, we'll be able to do the lime and the fertilizer, so we'll be able to use it for that. All right, bit of a trick to do this. So the next thing that we're gonna do today as well is we're gonna clear a space, and that space is gonna allow us to put down the sawmill. When we have a sawmill, it means that we'll be able to take these trees and put them in the sawmill rather than bringing them up here to sell them. Oh no, I actually did hit that tree. I didn't think I was going to get through that, but it's all good. Okay, almost there. So this is great if you want to sell things that are too big to carry. But just bear in mind that this isn't ideal in terms of making money. It's a way to make money, but it's not ideal. What we'd rather do is load up something like the trailer with lots of these smaller logs, and then we can sell them all in one go. I just want to try and get through this without hitting anything, if I can help it. Perfect. And all we need to do is just place this onto the selling platform. Once it's over the selling platform, we don't need to sell it. We just come over to here and press R, and that's now sold. And we've got £1,200 for that stump, which is perfect. 
So now, from there, we can come across to the shop. We can press P. We can have a look at the trailers. And we need to do lime and fertilizer. Now, there's two types of fertilizer. There's a sprayer and there's the fertilizer spreader. Now, the sprayer is a tank that we can get for liquid fertilizer and also for pesticides. So this is the pesticides um, and this is the liquid fertilizer. We could buy this. It's a lot of money. We're not going to use it that much. So we'd be better to lease it. But because we don't need to do the um, herbicide today, we don't have that problem with weeds, we need lime. So the second option is to use this, which is hard. Um, so this one would allow us to spread fertilizer, but also lime. So this is just fertilizer, and these are fertilizer and lime. Now, if we come across to the objects underneath and we look at the pallets, there's solid fertilizer and there's solid lime. Or if we look on these pallets, there's liquid fertilizer and liquid herbicide. There's also some other things here that we can get if we need. Now, we're not going for the liquid fertilizer or the herbicide. We're going here and you can't get the herbicide here in solid form. So we can see lime here. So a 2,000 litre lime here is 450 pounds. Okay, great, that's a pallet. Or the other thing that we can do is we can come back and go to bags. We can also see here that lime, exactly the same, 2,000 litres, but this is 100 pound cheaper. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna buy this because it's cheaper. So we're gonna go ahead and buy it. And we've now got that lime. We also want to buy fertilizer and we're gonna use solid fertilizer so we can do the same thing here. We're gonna buy this bag of fertilizer. So there we go, we're gonna go ahead and click on this. Now this is only a thousand liters, but lime spreads faster than fertilizer. So we don't need as much. This is a thousand liters, but it's a bit more expensive. We're gonna buy that as well. Perfect. So now you can see here, we have our two bags. We just need to go back in and grab our trailer. So we're gonna grab this one here. It's a lot to buy. So we're going to just uh, lease it for today. Still going to cost us 2000 but I'm going to do it to show you. So now we have it. Uh, first thing we need to do is remove our weight. So we're going to press Q to remove that from the back. We need to turn around and we're going to attach it to the front. The reason we're going to do that is because obviously we want to take the trailer. We can't do that with the weight. Okay. Then we simply just back up and we can attach the trailer to the back of the tractor. And as long as the trailer is near to the item that we want to add, we'll see a menu item that says refill fertilizer spreader. And to do that, we press R. So now you can see at the bottom, we're adding our fertilizer. And there we go, we have 11% capacity with a thousand liters of fertilizer. Now the problem we have here if we can't put the lime in with the fertilizer, we can't mix a match, it won't let us. If we uh, drive over here and try to do it, it just simply doesn't give us it as an option, it's not available to do. But we do have the forks with us. So because we were um, able to buy these yesterday, this means we can, and because we got the bags, and this is another reason why I got the bags over the pallet, is because if we line ourselves up and It'll take a little bit of work to do this. If you can do it with the camera, you can move around. You'll actually be able to hook the front of the forks here. You'll be able to hook them into the bag. It takes a little bit of playing about with the driving. But if you do it, you'll be able to hook the bag successfully. And then you can just simply tilt upwards and you can lift. And now we have the bag that we can take with us, as well as the contents which are in the back of the trailer. And again, we're being efficient with our time. We bought a log up to sell it. We're taking the tractor, the trailer, and the spare bag down with us. And I appreciate we're not gonna be able to do the lime today, but I wanna just show you how it works. And, and again, how you can do this to be uh, efficient with your time. And so this is it. Now we head back from the shop. And it's quite a long way to get to the shop. And this tractor's quite slow. 
So we want to do as much as possible in as few as, fewer trips as possible. Once we've done this, we'll finish off this field. Uh, we can look at doing another field if we want to. So if I press escape, I'm going to just save the content here. Okay, so if I press escape and look here on the calendar, we can do wheat or barley, wheat or barley, but we can also do canola. It's the second month to do canola. So we can get that second field and get that plowed today. And that's going to give us that option. The other thing we want to do, as we were talking about before, is we want to look at a sawmill. Now, the sawmill in no man's land is, is quite a large building, quite a large structure. So we need to figure out where we're going to place that. We need a lot of space for it. And that space needs to be flat. It needs to be flat. So out the back is the ideal place. Uh, we just need to look into that. So let's just get to here first. Okay, so now we're just going to drop off for a moment the uh, first bag. So we're just going to drop that there. Perfect. And then in order to lime, how you would do this is you would line yourself up. Now you can only drive over the crops during stage one. Anything other than this, you're going to destroy the crops because we've got crop destruction turned on. If we look at the field, it does say it needs lime, um, but we're not going to be able to do it. Now, normally when you lime, you're going to get like a white line that's going to show up. And all you would do is just drive forward and press B. I'm going to show you that now. So if I press B, it will turn it on like this. Now, this isn't actually lime in here. This is fertilizer. I just remembered, so I could actually do this. So let me just go ahead and fertilize. And it's very hard to tell. How do you know the area that you fertilized? How do you know if you've done it all or not? Well, if you ever get yourself in a situation, and this is sometimes handy with the AI, because sometimes you might be doing this and the, you'll use the AI to do the field, and the AI will finish. You won't, especially if you're doing contract work, it'll be like 96% and you'll be like, why hasn't it finished? And it's very difficult for you to tell, well, visually, what, what area has been done and what area hasn't been done. And the way that you would tell this is simply by pressing escape. So we'll just do this part of the field here. And then all I'm going to do right now is press escape. I'm going to go to the top map, to the filters. I'm going to come across to the filters to where it says fertilized. And if I zoom in, you can see the area we missed at the start. You can see this area here and this area that's been done twice. So the light blue has been done once. The dark blue is twice. You can't fertilize in the same month. So if you fertilize in this month, it'll be first layer. Next month, it'll be the second layer. So you, not, you want to fertilize when you seed, and then you want to fertilize in stage one. That's the best way to do this. So I didn't get to fertilize it yesterday. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. Or we didn't get to finish this off. Um, but I did just want to show you this process so you can see how it works. So again, press escape. You can see that's all been done. Now this is ticking down, so you want to be careful we don't waste this. As you can see, it is it's using the fertilizer. So I can press B to stop it, so I'm not wasting it. Get to where I need to be. Press B again to start it. It will just finish off that area for us. B to stop. I can check. Yep, that's pretty much all done. Great. Now, I want to swap this over for lime. But I can't do that while I've got fertilizer in here. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just pop to where I want to drop the fertilizer. And it always drops quite a distance to the right of the back of the tractor. And to do that... I just press I. I is the key to unload, and it shows you that in the controls. So if I press I, there you go, as you can see, it's dropped it quite a distance to the right-hand side. And it's given us a pallet as well, which is quite nice. Now I'm able to come over here, and I can now refill with the lime instead. So press R, it's gonna pick this up, all 2,000 liters of it. And we're good to go. We can repeat the process. Now, again, I can't I can't put lime down on this field because it won't take because the crops have started to grow. But on the very left-hand side here, there's a gap that was missed. So if I do this, you'll see. You'll see the white effect that you get from doing this. And that white effect is the lime going down. So you can kind of see that, how it would look. Uh, and that's just as an example so you can see it. But again, we can't do that at the moment. So we're going to save it. It doesn't hurt to have it. 
we'll be able to use it another time. So for now, we're just going to go here and do exactly what we did before. We're going to just place that down by pressing I. And again, it places it out. I don't know why it does it so far away, but it, it places it out to the right here. And there we go. You can see we've got our, our line and we've got our fertilizer. Perfect. Now that this is done, we don't need this machine anymore. We can actually send it back. So we'll press P. Go down to leasing. We're going to return it. Making sure we've taken everything out before we do that. Perfect. That's gone back. And we're good. So that's the field now. The field is ready. We've done as much as we can do to it. I mean, there's nothing else really now. Apart from just leaving it and, and waiting for it to grow. Uh, we've weeded. We've fertilized. We've shown you the lime. And if you've done it correctly. And you've done it in the right order. Then you will be... At maximum boost and some of the area up here has more fertilizer as you can see here so it, it depends but you can see the boost it changes so some areas we're getting to 80 maybe 90 percent boost in some area uh, and the rest of it we're getting somewhere around like the 50 60 percent mark so anything that increases the yield is, is a good thing to have all right so the next thing that i need to do is i need to take off the weight I'm going to spin around and put that on the back again. Because if I'm going to be carrying logs, I really need that counterbalance. And that's it. So the field is done. Again, we could put more down if we wanted to. And we could make a new field. I actually want to clear some space. So I'm not too worried about the crops at the moment. Because we're not going to get much done in this season. We could, we could plow a huge space out the back here. Um, but we've got all these boughs in the way, so we don't really want to do it, do too much here. Uh, but we do really want to get down this sawmill, and that's something we're going to have to consider now. You can buy an, uh, an attachment for the front loader that would allow you to move these bales, because they're not quite ready yet. Or, if you drive slowly, you just gently nudge them out of the way, and you know, sometimes that's a, another way that you can do this. But we have a look at the bale. It's 30% fermented. We can see that in the bottom right hand corner there. 3,500 litres, 30% fermented. So we need to leave that until it becomes 100%. And so whilst we're waiting, we don't really have much else to do. We're going to see about putting down this sawmill. Now the sawmill is a huge, huge, huge building. Um, ridiculously huge in fact. And it can be very, very difficult to place. So... On some maps that you go to, if you use some of the other maps, they'll already have a sawmill. So you won't have to do this, but I'm just showing you how you would do it if you're on a map starting from scratch. The way that we would do this is by moving all of these out of the way. Okay, that's just an easy way for me to be able to do this. It also looks like we're going to go and have to chop down this tree here. Um, not that tree. This one. I think this tree here is in the way. We're going to have to get rid of this. Perfect. Now, I can just kind of throw this out the way for now. So I'll bring it over here. And we'll just kind of leave that there for now out of the way. Alright, now we've got this... We've got this open space here, and I have a feeling this tree might also be in the way. Uh, the other thing we can do is kind of chop this one down. I don't know if the tree stumps are going to cause a problem. It's very possible they will. We'll see. But I'm going to knock this tree down. I'm then going to peel the branches off. Sometimes it might struggle to get some of the branches. You just have to about with it. Perfect. Now this tree is 1.6 ton. We know we can pick that up. So we're going to jump in our tractor. And we're simply going to back up. Open this up. Position ourselves so we're roughly in the middle of it. And exactly like we did before going to drive over it. We're going to bring this down. 
we're going to close it we're going to tip it up perfect and as you can see we actually did miss a couple of bits so we can grab those That prep work just means you'll get more money when you sell this. And now we can move this. So using the machinery to be able to move things out of the way. Much, much easier. Now we don't want to hassle of taking this all the way up to the shop to sell it again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to press P. From P we're going to go to the bottom menu. We're going to press construction. And oh, one of the things I'm hoping is if we go to uh, production, second tab, we're looking across for no man's land mod, which is the sawmill. The sawmill takes trees in and produces wood chips and planks. Now this is a huge, huge, huge building, as you can see here, it's, uh, it's, it's rather large. And so what we need to do is actually find where we can place this. Now there's actually it's not just the building itself, there's kind of space around the building that it's also going to require. And so, it's not always easy to be able to place this. It, it can take some work, you're going to have to, oh, there we go, it would actually fit just here. I found a space for it. Now, you might think to yourself, but why is that more money? It says it's 20,000, but actually this is charging me 30,000. Well, why is it charging me so much? And the reason for that is because it's not just placing the building. It's placing the building and it's also leveling the land. So it won't actually fit on the land because of the, um, the, the gradient of the land. And so it's going to be using the landscaping tool as well as the building placement. And it's going to level the building out and do all of the stuff it needs to do. But here as we can see there's a, a gap here where we can still get around the other side if we need to. Um, so we can leave that and also what we need to bear in mind I'm just going to rotate this to show you is you can see in the middle here there's that kind of hazard also on the left front there's that like hazard symbol and on the side here there's a hazard symbol that is because this sawmill has three points of interest that we're going to need so uh, we're actually going to place this down we're going to try and get it in a place where we want it somewhere like this uh, I want to try and put it so it's aligned with that rock. So we've still got the space behind this to build a field later. Because uh, we will be having a field later as well. So we're going to put this somewhere like this. Okay, that's going to give us that space that we need. We want to go kind of as far forward as we can. Not too far forward, but as far forward as we can to be able to place this. We can move those trees later, so that's not a problem. We'll get, get rid of all of those trees. But this is going to give us this space. So this looks like a good place for us. We're going to pay 9528 to level the ground. We're going to go ahead and place this. There we go. So we've just placed our sawmill. And if we actually come out of this now, jump out of our tractor and turn around, there it is. There's our sawmill. So it's been leveled, as you can see. The whole uh, place has been leveled. And now we've got this place here. This is where we can uh, drop off wood chips or pick them up. That was actually where the tree was. It's a little bit unfortunate it's done that. We're not actually going to be able to do anything with that. That's uh, mm, that's just a circle where the tree is. We, we could have, mm, in an ideal world, we could have cut those trees down first and it would have been nice and level. That is, <laughs> that is rather unfortunate. There is nothing we can do about that apart from taking out the tree stump, picking up the sawmill and putting it back down again. But we're not going to do that right now. This area is where we'll drop our logs here and we can come here to sell them. So exactly the same as the shop, we come here to sell this. We drop them in this area and around here, this is our collection point. Oh, again, there's another where a tree was. A little bit unfortunate that we, we really should have cleared those tree stumps out first. A good lesson, a good lesson there in preparation would be to ensure that we clear out the tree stumps so that it doesn't look like that because this driving over it is going to be quite quite a nightmare um, but temporarily this is fine it will work okay so what we can do now I'll just show you this and how it works we're going to chop down a tree so we can start here we've got loads of trees here we'll just take this one 
Okay, we're going to pick this up. It doesn't weigh anything. It's 63 kilograms. And we're going to place this in this area here. That's it. Now all we need to do is come over here. And we can press R to sell it. That's it. And now we've got some wood. So we're going to do it again, just to show you. Turn this sideways. Cut down that tree. Pick this up. We're going to come place it over here. Drop it. Come over here, press R to sell it. There we go. So now, if we come over to the door of the building here, and we press R, it's going to open up the production chain. You can also get here by pressing escape, and then on the left hand side, coming down to production chains. And you can see we've got a sawmill. The sawmill will take 60 litres of trees and create 80 litres of planks and 3 litres of wood chips. At the moment we've got 267 litres of wood. Which means that we could go and sell the wood. That was one thing we could do and if we look at the prices of wood. Wood sells at the moment for 1,792 if we were to sell it to the farm shop up the top. It would actually sell also for 1825 to the sawmill. But we don't get the money for that. And the reason we don't get the money for that is because it then goes into production. And it starts to create planks and wood chips. And what we can do is we can sell later these items like the planks. Now the planks we can sell to the farm shop for more. We can actually sell them for 2266 So not only are we selling the planks for more than the wood. But also, we're getting more planks for our wood. So our wood is creating more planks, and our planks are selling for more money. Now there are three options in the production chain. If I click on this, this will tell us how much wood we've got. If I click on this, it will tell us it is storing. Now, when it says storing, I can change the output mode by pressing Enter. I can go from storing to selling, from selling to distributing, and back to storing. What this means is if it is storing, then it will take this wood, it will turn it into planks, and it will output these here in this storage area. And I don't know if that is going to fall down that hole. We'll wait and see. Should be fun. But it will place it just here in this storage area. Now, it will put up to five pallets here, a thousand litres each pallet, and we can use a forklift to pick it up, load it on a lorry, and take it to sell it. And that way we'll get more money. Or, if we change this to selling, then if it is selling, nothing will come here. There will be no pallets. Instead, this will take our planks and it will sell it directly to the marketplace for us for a fee. And I think the fee is about 40%. So we will lose about 40% of the value, but what we won't have to do is we won't have to transport them. So that is an option to create some residual income there. The last option that we saw here is distributing. If we have another production chain, for example, let's say we have carpentry that requires planks, we can send the planks directly from the sawmill to the carpentry and we can move the production chain along. So just some things to consider there. The last thing that we must do if we want to start is by clicking on the uh, production chain and we have to activate it and that is now working that is now taking the wood and as you can see it's taking the wood and it's turning it into planks this is going to have a production cost of 48 pounds per month that is what we have to pay to run this machine uh, to run this production chain <clears throat> it's going to give us 192 cycles per month and as you can see we've just had two cycles we're about to have a third it will just keep going through. There we go. And that's it. That's all we need to do. So the only other thing now is to feed it trees. We have to be able to put the trees in here. And for that to happen, well, we're going to take our tractor. We're going to take our rather large stick. And we're going to drive it around. And now we no longer have to take our wood all the way up the top to sell it. And there's ways that we could uh, make this a little bit better. Obviously, as you can see, there were some, some challenges in doing this. If you're good.
good with an editor. You can actually uh, edit the map and play about with it and do things. There's ways you can make it a bit better. It's not perfect. A bit like my driving, but it's, it works. If I had removed the tree stumps and actually completely cleared out the area, then it would have it would have been absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, that's just one of those things. It's a bit unfortunate that happens. All right, so what I need to do is make sure the tree is in the cell area. As long as some of it is there, I can then come across and I can sell it. So you can see in the bottom right hand corner, this is this sawmill is running. There is currently 183 litres of wood. If I sell this, I've now got 3,600 litres of wood. Plenty of wood for now. And as you can see here, there's a capacity. I can just keep adding wood until it's full. Uh, we don't want this to distribute, so we're going to change it to storing. And that's it. That is all we need to do. And we've got a lot of trees to remove here, so... We can spend some time. And there's not really much else we can do at the moment, so we can do this. Now, that's wood. That's kind of all you need to know right now about wood. And also, that's a good introduction to production chains. What I want to do now, just very briefly... I'm just going to... I'm going to move this over. What I want to do now, just very briefly, is I want to talk about the next step of the production chain. So, if I press P, come back into construction, go back to production, I want to look for the next step. So, we have a sawmill that produces planks. If we look around at all of these buildings here, they all do different things. Now, the carpentry takes in trees and planks, and it creates furniture. But it's going to cost us £60,000. It's quite a small building. But as you can see, this is a, another building that we can place. And it works in exactly the same way. You can see there's a, a drop-off area and a pick-up area. Pick-up area is out the back. Drop-off area yeah, is at the front. And so having that right there, or wherever we want to put it, it's going to allow us to extend our production line. And then we can do the distributing of the planks directly to the carpentry place. There is another mod that is available, um, as we can see here. There's lime production, which is new to this map. There's gold production, and there's methane production. They are new to this map, and you can tell because it says there are no man's land mod, which means they've been added specifically to this map. This sawmill is a different building, um, so you just have to bear that in mind. Everything else is standard. Also, selling points. So selling points is where we would sell those items. So for example, if we wanted to sell furniture, we would have to find what would, what would, sell, what would take the furniture. Now we could sell it up the top where we can sell everything. But we can also sell it in other places as well. So here there's a restaurant, a supermarket, a uh, pizzeria, uh, lots of different buildings, and you can see all of the icon, all the things they take. So the supermarket does take furniture, but it's going to cost us eighty thousand to put that down. But if we do put that down, we're going to be able to transport from the carpentry to the supermarket. There is also these um, mods here. Now I don't like using these, but you have these selling points. This is for bales, so this will take bales. So our silage, we can sell it here. This is for grain. So we can put this down to sell grain. And this is for production. So anything from production, if we put this down, we can sell it. Now, I don't like this because I could build a greenhouse. I could put the sell point right next to it and I could literally just pick up a box from the greenhouse and sell it on here. It's a bit cheesy. So therefore, I've got a rule that no selling points are allowed to be put in the same square as the production point. So for example, if I'm producing furniture in this square, I have to put the selling point in another square. Now, you could argue that, well, there's a line here, we'll just put it there. Fair enough. But you've got to buy that land first. So, that's my rule of thumb. Because I want to make this, you know, there's no there's no right or wrong answer to this, but you want to make it kind of realistic. And part of the realism for me is driving or, you know, transporting from one facility to the next. And so I actually want to build somewhere out. I don't just want to slap this on the ground and, and, and kind of cheese it or cheat. If I'm going to do this, I actually want to build it properly. So, again, some different items or some different buildings have different things. Now, you can add mods. You can go in and you can look in the mods 
and you can add completely new production lines. There's so much you can do. Um, different buildings, different cell points, and if you're creative and good with an editor, you can even create your own. So you can take buildings, you can create your own cell points, and you can completely, absolutely customize this. You can you can build your own world. Um, there is there's no limit. So that's it for our productions. I've shown you that. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at where we go from here. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at greenhouses. Now the way that a greenhouse works, because we're coming up towards um, winter, is I can place a greenhouse. And that is going to require water as an input. And it is going to give me out certain things. In this case, strawberries, tomatoes. And you can see there's a medium and a large. But there's also two mods here, specific just for this map. There is the flower nursery and a mushroom greenhouse. These are two new, um, I say crops, but two new products that are not available in other maps. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to set up a flower nursery greenhouse. So I want to be able to do this. Now, before I set this up, I just want to be able to clear these trees out the way. So right now, for the rest of today, my goal is to clear all of these trees from here and put all of these trees into this sawmill. That's my goal. And then once we've done that, we're going to hire a tool that's going to remove all of the stubs and the stumps, which is kind of what we should have done before. And at that point, I may possibly, I may possibly remove the sawmill. Um, we'll get some money back for it if we sell it. So to sell, we just press P. Go to construction, click on it, and we can sell it. We're going to get half the money back, but it is what it is. We can also rename it if we want to. So it's a sawmill, but you know, you can rename it if you want. So for now, I'm going to clear all these trees, put them into here. Let this do its job. And then we're going to look at the next production line that we're going to create, which is going to be the greenhouses. And we're going to create that just about here. But to do that, we're going to do it slightly differently because I'm going to prep the land first. So, uh, let's get to it. You know, quite a bit of work to do. A lot of trees to cut down. But let's clear this land. Obviously, there's going to be a delay in us getting the money from these trees. We're going to have to get the planks first, but it's absolutely fine. Alright. These are 35 meter trees. These are quite large trees. As you can see. This is something that we can do right now. Now, we've talked about crops. we put our crops down. We've talked about ways that we can earn money. So we understand that. We know how we can make money. The next thing to consider, we've also talked about production chains. The next thing to consider is, well, what if we don't want to do crops? What if crops aren't really our focal point? We know how production chains work. We know how crops work. What if we want to get into forestry instead? Well, that's definitely possible and something we can do. We need to look at how much money that's going to cost. So let's go ahead and look at the forestry equipment. Because it could make life a lot easier and a lot quicker for us. Now for this, we'd have to hire one of these machines. Now, there's three different options. And to be honest, I only ever use this one because the difference is the uh, the trees. This one can cut a diameter of 64 centimeters. This one, which is for some reason less money, but can do more. I don't actually understand the logic behind this. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, but this one can cut 71, and this one can cut 80 centimeters. I use this one. Now it's 470,000, which is an incredible amount of money. It's a lot of money to be able to buy this. We could lease it, but we simply don't have enough money. So we're going to do this right now until we've generated enough money that we can hire that machine and then we can use that machine to clear all of the trees. And it would make life so much easier and it will be so much quicker to be able to do this. So again, that's the, the kind of plan that we're aiming towards, but we're not quite there yet. So it's part of the progression. You just need to use a chainsaw. I appreciate it's going to take a bit longer to do it this way, but we know that we're aiming towards something.
The other thing is how we're going to transport the logs. Now, our poor little tractor is going to struggle to pick up these really big, huge logs in one go. So we have to chop them down. But later, what we can do is we can get a trailer, a big trailer, and we can stick all of these huge logs without even cutting them. We can just pick them up in one go and put them straight into a huge trailer. Um, and that we're going to get maximum money for these as a result. So just something to bear in mind that we're going to progress. But for now, I'm gonna, I don't actually think I'm doing a very good job of cutting this down. I actually don't think I've got any of that. Sometimes it's a bit hit and miss. Let's go back for it. There we go. These are these are huge. This one is. 3.9 tons. 3.9 tons. So a, a massive one there. Lots and lots of wood. Setting these, we will make a, an incredible amount of money up front. Again, we're going to do the planks instead. It's a, a bit delayed in terms of our re, uh, reward. But right now, that's absolutely fine. There's nothing else we need to do. We're waiting for the grass to regrow. So we can cut it again. So this just kind of gives us something to do whilst we're waiting, and uh, unfortunately we seem to have hit the sawmill. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, because I can actually take you up onto the roof. Give you a, a nice view of our area. I'm just going to chop the end for that, make it easier. There we go. So, as you can see, here's our land. You can see the area we're currently working on. We will get rid of that tree as well. We'll also get rid of these two trees at the back there. We need to get rid of a few of those trees that are in our area here. We can't cut any of these down because we don't own this land. Only cut trees down in the areas that you own. But yeah. And then we're going to obviously get rid of all these as well around here. So still lots of work to do. Lots of work to do, but all good. Oh, we're going to leave that one there for now. Alright, already a, a lot of space cleared, as you can see, starting to make some progress. Currently 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Still got some time. You can do this into the night. Um, there's no there's no pressure, there's no rush. You can't landscape away the tree stumps. Now there are mods. There are mods that allow you to change. You can get a mod where you can uh, use the chainsaw to remove the tree stumps. But um, I don't do that. Uh, there's actually a bit of equipment you need to hire. And so I, uh, I go ahead and I do that. But there's no point us hiring it now, because we'd spend the money for it. We'd, we're better off chopping down all the trees first, removing them, clearing the area, and then we can hire the equipment and come back and do this. Alright, so, lots of trees. Like we might miss one. There we go. There's various different types of trees. There's various different um, things you have to consider. But you, you you kind of get a visual. After a while, visually, you kind of see them and they, they start to make sense. You start to recognise them. So don't worry too much if you're just starting out and you can't get the hang of it. It, it does get easier. Also, if you have the um, Platinum Edition of the game, you'll get a, a lot of additional forestry equipment as well. New map, um, new tools, and things that you can play about with. And, uh, we will install that later as a, as a mod. It'll be the first mod I show you. Um, but right now, we're just sticking to the base game. Um, I don't want to install mods in the game until we're kind of fully established and very happy with how this game goes.
All right, that's uh, another tree done. So this is it right now. It's just a case of rinse and repeat. Normally this is where you put a time lapse on and uh, make the process go a lot quicker. Fortunately for you, you get to listen to me. If you struggle, just chop the end off. It's uh, sometimes easier that way. Try this again. There you go, it's working now. It wasn't working before, so it's much better now. So much easier just to run down the, uh, the length of the tree if you can. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, this one here. Smaller tree. Sometimes hard to tell what's a tree, what's a bush. I think we've broken our house by the looks of it. Get that in a minute. And already, really starting to open up this area. We're starting to see the difference this has made already. Okay, so we have actually cut this one. We're going to apparently climb this tree. Why not? I don't recommend chainsawing the tree while you're standing on it. It's not a good idea. Wow. What a view. Life of a lumberjack. We're going to come down here. We haven't cut this one yet, so we'll do that now. Sometimes they fall, sometimes they don't. You can take chunks out of them, you can you do whatever works for you. I normally find, ironically, if you cut them straight, they fall. Um, I used to cut them at an angle because that's what I always believed was the best thing to do, but in this game, they seem to fall better when you cut them straight. But they do sell for more money when you strip them, which is why it's kind of a uh, reason to do that. I think that's a bush or something. I don't know why I can't get onto that. We'll leave that bit. That's fine. Alright, so so far, uh, made a bit of a mess. It's all good. We'll do these little trees as well. These little ones we can just move by hand. These are just tiny. We'll just cut them all and then we'll just come back and pick them all up and just yeah, it'd be a bit easy just to run them over to the sawmill, which is why we placed it here. Again, we don't have that far to go. Makes it nice and easy for us, so. Alright. In lots of tree stumps as well. Sometimes people prefer to do the tree stumps at the same time. I don't mind, I go around afterwards. If anything, worst case scenario, you can uh, you can mow the lawn and you're gonna find all the tree stumps that way. A lot of prep work going in here. Uh, we will get the rewards from this later. Don't worry too much. I just realised we've placed a big tree on a little tree. It's going to make it quite difficult for us to actually pick this tree up now. That's all good. Alright, that's... Um Pretty much most of this area done, I think. Yep, that one's done as well. So this one we can just run over. Let really see where we're going, but you can uh, get the idea. And we can just run that to there and sell it. And we can jump in our tractor. And now the fun begins. So as you can see, there were loads of trees to do. We haven't even done about 50% of this yet. Okay, let's uh, let's start the process. So we're going to head over here. This looks like it's going to be our first one. Now this is only a small tractor, remember. And also, this is the smallest. Oh. Very nice, it's showing us a few extra bits there. This is the smallest uh, front-loading attachment. 
that we bought the cheapest one. So we don't have a lot of range, we don't have a lot of height, we don't have uh, a lot of ability. We have enough, it works for us, but it's not it's not ideal for these big, big, big... I mean, this one is... I don't even know what this is. It's like 3.9 tons. Like, we could really struggle here. Like, we might not even be able to do this. I think we're punching quite uh, high above our weight class. But that being said... You don't try it, you don't know, right? So we're going to grab onto this. Oh, no. It's already freaking out. Alright, well, let's... Uh see what happens shall we that's uh, that's exactly what happens <laughs> if it's too heavy like that we can't do anything about it it just it freaks out it breaks um, we can try again but you can see already the back wheels already well off the ground here and we haven't even we haven't even done anything yet so yeah not something we're gonna be able to pick up but if that ever happens it's not a problem don't stress just just cut it in half. Again, it's not a problem. Don't um, don't stress yourself out. Just work with what you can. This is still still a little bit too heavy for us. Although yeah, we can kind of move with it. No, no, no. Looks like we're still going to struggle. Right, we'll. Just lower it a little bit. Again, it's all about the weight distribution. We might just be able to do this. I, I think we might. We're going to struggle, but I think we might be able to do it. This is probably the the upper limits of our abilities right here. But yeah, yeah, we've we've got it. We're good. Again, important to have a lot of space around this sawmill for moving things like this around. What we need to do is with a bumpy ground there we can level that out with the terraforming tool later but we need to do is get this onto this spot it doesn't have to be on perfectly it just needs to be on that's fine now we're at 3,000 liters of wood right now and that's big so now we're going to go from 3,000 liters up to eight and a half thousand liters that is a huge amount of wood and uh yes here you can see our first pallet rather awkward angle um, nice fun there's not really much we can do about that if I if I go into the construction mode and I go into landscaping and I go into sculpting to raise and lower the land if I was to zoom right into this area here and try and lift this up as you can see it won't oh, oh it won't lift and, and the reason for that is because you can't do it where it's already on property. So we can try and level, but again, it's not going to work. It just it won't it won't do it. So the only option we have right now is to sell this building. Unfortunately, as sad as that is, and then we can try and do that afterwards. Not really much we can do, unfortunately. It's just one of those things. So, we would have to sell this. We'd have to clear out the land and leave it. And then we'd have to do it again. I don't want to sell it now because we'll lose all of the wood we put in. So, we need to put the wood in. We need to leave it to process the wood. And then afterwards, then at that point, we can look to sell it and, and just reposition it. Alright, let's... Uh, Try this again. So this one, because it's already in the air, it's nice and easy. Again, it's all about dynamics. Sometimes you can um, you can sometimes grab stuff. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. It really depends on the angle you've got and where you are. Sometimes you can drive backwards really fast and then break suddenly, and it will. Uh, it will fall backwards into your into your arms, so to speak, or into your holder. I'm just going to try and pick this up and move it out of the way so it's not against the sawmill. Okay. 
I mean, I've kind of got it, but I, I, have, I have a feeling it's going to drop in a second. Do you know what? If you've got it and it works and you can move with it, then just run with it. We're waiting for the grass to grow. We'll cut all of this again. Make some more bales up. We do want to purchase some more land. That's something we're going to focus on as well. And we don't need to do that just yet though. So the other thing I can do here is I can just drop this like this. And I can come back and sell it later. I don't have to sell everything in one go. I just need to make sure it's some of it, not all of it, but some of it is inside that area. Another way you can do this if you prefer is you can like nicely chop everything up and put it into the back of the trailer. And you can drag that across. I, I tend to not bother for this because the whole reason of putting a sawmill here for me was just to make that production train that much easier. In the early stages anyway, once, you, uh, once you've you run out of trees, you're going to need to find a new way to do stuff. And I think I'm probably being a little bit ambitious here with this. I think I'm going to be able to pick that up. So that's fine. It'll come out. How much is that? That's another 3.9 ton, no wonders. Oh. Grab that branch. And we'll just come somewhere in the middle and we'll just cut it. Again, just making our life a little bit easier. It always weighs more towards the base. Obviously, it makes a lot of sense because it's thicker. really really struggling with this so we will be buying a, uh, a telehandler later and the difference and it's quite good that you struggle with it because I, I kind of talked about this before when when you're designing or building a game you actually want people to experience pain it's not a bad thing the reason for that is that I believe we live in a world of duality uh, for every up there's a down left there's a right in there's an out and for every good there's a bad for every positive and negative. So, for you to experience pleasure, you first need to understand pain. And when you understand that concept of human psychology, then you understand from game development that the purpose of a game is to get you to experience pain, but not too much pain that you quit. It needs to be just enough of a grind, just enough pain, that makes you appreciate the pleasure and so when we upgrade our tractor to something better we will appreciate the tractor simply because of the pain we've experienced with this one and uh, and that's why i think it's not a bad thing to struggle a little bit here not too much that you get frustrated and quit obviously just understanding that i think helps it does get better but still quite a nice process and we're able to do the basics. I mean we could buy a bigger weight, we could lease a bigger tractor, there's, there's so many things we could do to improve this, but money, money's tight right now, we don't have a lot of money. You know, down to like 23,000 out of our starting capital. So what we're going to do now is with that remaining money that we've got, we're going to set up a new production chain. Uh, in order to do that, I said I just want to clear this Clear this land. Right, that will do for now. Let's sell these. Alright, awesome. So we just did that. And we're getting some pallets. They're on their way. We'll wait until we've got enough pallets that we can take them all to the same time and sell them. And the way we'll do that at the moment is with our truck. We'll put them into our truck. We ideally need to buy a new truck. Something that we can put the pallets in. We'll look to do that next. So, what I kind of want to do here is just clear out this last tree. This one here. I want to move these trees out of the way next. And then this is where we're going to build our next production. So I'm starting to plan ahead. I'm starting to think about what I want to do. I'm 
And the way that I can do that is simply by coming across to the... Uh, let me actually just strip down this tree here. See what I'm doing. And let's just talk about the next uh, the next stage here. So I'm going to pick this up. Move that there out of the way. Uh, these bushes, we're actually going to get rid of these bushes. Now, there is a tool that we can buy, the mulcher. And with the mulcher, we would simply come over the bushes with the truck and we would remove them. There is another way that you can kind of get rid of these bushes, which is not too bad of a problem. Um, and that is by pressing P. Go into construction. Go into landscaping. Go into painting. Now, the reason I'm doing this right now is because I actually want to set out an area. Now, as you can see here, there's this kind of green land here, and then we've got this area here. So, what I want to do initially is, uh, I don't mind having a bit of grass down the side here, but we want to look at what we can do. So, I don't want animal mud. Right now, we could just use dirt. Dirt works. And I can actually use this to spray. Now, remember, this is going to cost me money. So, you might not want to spend too much time and too much money doing this. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to create like a little road. And as I do this, as I create this road, as you can see, if I spray over a bush, it will remove that bush. Okay, it won't remove tree stumps. But I can do this just to create a, a new area. So I kind of want to have a little path going down here. And that's going to go all the way there to the back of the house. Gives me a little area that I can... There we go. Now I probably want to make it a bit bigger than that, but that does give me that path. And then, if I was to want to go maybe a bit bigger, say to there, and I've got that space. So I've got that path, and I can now get down the side. Now what I want to do is think about, well, what do I want to put down? Do I want asphalt? Do I want concrete? Do I want concrete bricks? They all cost two pounds each. They're all the same price. Wet mud, water puddle, granite, rock, a riverbed, a pathway gravel. Uh, a pathway, uh, gravel dark, gravel moss, and you can also get mods to add new ones of these if you want to. Um, I think for now, what we're going to do is use uh, gravel dirt. Okay, so here we go. We're going to use gravel dirt, and this is going to give us some nice. Uh, there we go. Some nice kind of texture to this. We can go ahead and we can do this over this land. We're going to go all the way back here. We're just going to do this until we get this area. Now, the kind of area that I want, you'll see, is something like this. Probably around this sort of size. It's going to go from the back all the way around to here. Now, you can't do areas with trees on it. I'd have to actually remove the trees to be able to do this. But you can get the idea of what we're doing. So, I'm building this side of space. I kind of went a bit crazy there with the... There we go. And also, I want to kind of bring this around the front as well, so we'll do that. Then we've got this kind of dark dirt path that comes all the way around the front here. See where I'm standing right now. Okay. So we've kind of got this dirt path that's going to come all the way around here. And then we're going to have this gravel dirt as well. That is going to come all the way along here. And then that will line up nicely. Maybe go one more, one more piece. And that is going to line up nicely with our house. It's going to give us this additional space to work from. Great. So now we've got this. And we can come and look in a little more of this and, and sort the rest of this out later. It's not a problem. But you, you get the idea. So again, it's costing us quite a bit of money. So we don't want to waste of money but we do want to make sure we've got this space and this is where we're going to build so let's just come out of this for now here we go so you can now see we've got this path here this path here and we've got this area here which we just need to clear out so in order to do that we're going to need to move these which actually weigh off quite a lot and this one's not too bad we can pick this one up just throw it over here for now OK, 
Okay, get rid of that tree there. As you can see, quite a lot of work we still need to do moving stuff around and getting rid of it. We're going to need to use our tractor to do that. So still quite a lot of manual work we need to do. We can't we can't use the landscaping for everything, but it does help us just to kind of clear that area. And you can you can already see uh, the difference that we've made in just uh, moving some stuff. Now I'm not going to bother picking up all of these for now. I don't really need to do that. I can just use the tools that I've got. All I need to do is just bring it down and just push it out of the way. Now it's going to be slightly different with these two. I actually want to go around the other side to do this. Because I don't want to push them into the house. Again I can do the same thing here. And just come down to here. Put this on the floor. And from there I can just push these. And hopefully all goes well. I might struggle a little bit. But the idea is we're just trying to clear the space. Perfect. Alright, now that is going to allow us to finish off the kind of asphalt that we need to put down, or the, the gravel dirt, should we say. And we've got our little area. So, the reason I wanted to show you this, and we've still got some work to do, we have to grind out those stumps. That's something we'll have to do next. The reason I wanted to show you this, I'll just jump out of there, press P, come back into construction mode. Remember, whilst you're in construction mode, time is going to go by and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't stop the time, so just bear that in mind when you're kind of in here doing this. Grab our gravel dirt again. Again, we're going to try and line up to the house here to make it nice and... Uh, there's a little bit we missed there. We'll come back and we'll get that in a sec. There we go. Pretty much got most of it. We can use the lawnmower to come and cut this grass as well. That's another thing we can do. Make sure we get this to here. Perfect. So that is ah, looking pretty good. Now I want to get some dirt. Just kind of finish off this. So it's all, all nice. I'll do this bit as well here. And we just do a little bit around here as well. So we've got this kind of dirt path going all the way around. I'll come to that in a sec. Perfect. I think I need a little bit more gravel dirt just in the corner here. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, that is our base. So we... Oh. It was our base. You'll be much better at this than me. There we go. So we've now got our base. Now obviously there's some tree stumps that we need to get rid of still. And we can bring the lawnmower out and go over this. And we'll, we'll get to that. We'll fix that. It's not a problem right now. But now we can start to think about well, what we're going to build here. What do we want to do? So if we go to construction, production. And we go to greenhouses. I want to build a flower nursery greenhouse. Now, the reason I want to do that is because it costs £1,500 for a greenhouse. That's it. Just £1,500. You can see here there is uh, an input point and uh, an output. And that means that we have to put water in to get flowers out. Okay, that's it. Water in to get flowers out. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to place, and I'm going to show you the way that I would do this. Now you do it obviously whatever's right for you. We're actually going to be placing three of these. So we're going to be placing one here like this. We're also going to be placing one here just like this. And I want to try and get these right. I want to try and get them in the right place. We're going to have one here like this. We're going to have one here like this. And then we're going to have another one here just like this. We're going to have three of them. And I'll show you as to why we're going to do this. So let's get the first one down first. So in order to place this, I want to kind of try my best to line this up so it's in line with the house, best I can. 
We're going to place it just here like this. I think that it's pretty good, pretty close. So we're going to place this here. Oh, we can't because it overlaps another object. That is the tree stump, right? Yes. I need to clear the tree stumps. Let's uh, let's go ahead and let's clear these tree stumps because uh, that's something else we need to do. Um, in order to do that, I just want to very quickly chop down the rest of these trees. I don't need to move these trees at the moment, but I do want to chop them down. And the reason for that is because if I'm going to do these tree stumps, I want to do them all at the same time. So there's a lot of work to do. We'll we'll get to this. This is going to take a couple of months. This one's going to be a big one. I don't know where it's going to fall. Uh, onto our house, perfect. Now we don't need to get absolutely every tree. And also we have to think it's going to get dark quite soon. So we can spend the rest of today doing this and prepping the area. And then tomorrow we can get the tree stumps because we want to lease the equipment in the morning if we can and make sure it's back by the end of the day. We can clear all of these trees out. We can clear out the tree stumps. And then we can get everything into the production for the wood. And then we can get our second production chain up. So we can do that next month. There's a few things that we're going to need to buy to make this work. So in order for us to have flowers, we need water. Now we have a free water source, remember? There was a free water source that we have by using the lake. Or... We can put in our own water pump and we can pay for it. I'm going to show you both times. Alright, first, let's prep. Now I think flowers in this game at the moment are one, uh, if not a little bit broken, a little bit OP, but one of the best ways right now in starting to generate income. And, and this is really what you're going to have to do. Whatever map you play on, either your own or one that you're playing on that you download, you have to find the production chain that works for you. There'll always be one. There'll always be something. Uh, you just have to figure out what it is, whether you create it yourself, whether you find one that already exists. There'll always be a production chain that works. You just need to find it. Right, this is a lot of trees. Wood for days. And uh, that's not a bad thing because, again, I'm going to convert all of this into money. I think whilst I'm here also, we'll go and do the trees that are up in the field. And we're not going to be able to go much further here. In fact, I don't think we're not going to be able to cut this down. It's not in our land, so as far as we can go here. I don't think we're going to be able to do that one either. No, we're not. So again, lots of uh, lots of trees cut down. We can't really see much of what's going on at the moment. Um, but that's fine. We'll come back and do that later. I think that one, yeah, we already did this one. And so that's it. That's all of the trees. Main ones. I believe we've done that one yet. Yeah, we have. I believe we did this one. Yes, we did. Excellent. So that's all of the trees. Now we need to go down and obviously sort of all, all of the trees that we can do, apart from the ones that are in our garden. We're gonna we're gonna leave those. They're in our garden. They're quite nice. Yep. Everything we can do, we've done. So now we just need to go out here and have a look in the field. There's another pallet as well. So this is now ready as well. Out in the field, there's a couple of trees here. I can go and grab these. That way when we come to do the grass again, we won't have the, the hassle or the worry of these. Now that one could stay there because it's in, uh, in the rock area, so that's fine. 
We're, we're almost done. We're almost at the end of the day right now. Okay, that's it. I don't think there's any more trees there. We're only going to go up to this line here. Oh yeah, that's about it. We've got all this nice open space. That one down the bottom there, I don't think is in our land. I think that's outside. Need to double check. Uh, there is a couple here. We can do these. And I believe this one. Maybe this one. Might be just outside. No, that's good as well. But that one's definitely outside. No, no it's not. This one's actually in our land. Interesting. That one's definitely not. Yeah. Okay. So, we've got the trees. We've got the stumps. Everything there's done. All good. So now we just need to strip the trees down. And then we need to do the stumps. Now, I'm not going to do the stumps today because it's too late. We'll do that tomorrow. And then what we can also do after this is we can plow all of this field and create a whole big massive field out the back here and that's going to allow us to we can put some, we can even put grass seed down to create a grass bed and then with the AI will be able to farm that for us we won't have to do it ourselves we can automate that process which is nice one thing we can't automate though is the trees we have to do that ourselves nice Once we do this, it's going to make it a lot easier to see what we're doing. So I, uh, I, I highly recommend as you as you go to, to clean up the trees. And with these ones, actually, these small ones, we could just pick them up as they are. And just run them over. There's, there's not that much. In terms of distance. That one weighs too much. Again, it's a bit hit and miss. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on the angle that you get as you're doing the chainsaw. So sometimes it's perfect. Climb well, up this one. You, you can sometimes get a bit lost in here doing this, so... I would say if you want an easier way of doing this, just do one at a time. You don't have to go and chop them all down like I did. I'm just uh, trying to be more efficient with my time for this video. Now it's not going to let me cut down a tree because it says I'm, I'm outside of my area, but I can strip the branches off of it, so that's, that's okay. ones here. Yes it is. Once you've done a few trees you'll start to clear up, you'll start to see a bit better. This one. It's fine, that's a nice light one so we can just run that straight over. Lovely. You can see this thousand pound chainsaw is an incredible investment uh, in the early game. It really does give you so many uh, options to do things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Again, if you want to download the mod to be able to do the tree stumps with the chainsaw, you can do that. I'm, it's not in the core game, which is why I don't do it. Again, I don't, don't want any mods that I shouldn't have. If the game was intended me to uh, buy an attachment to do the trees, then I will buy an attachment to do the trees. Later, if you got bored and you don't want to do it, by all means, turn it off, change it, do whatever you want. I already got that one, so I can just pick that one up. There'll be a whole forest here by the time I've finished. Right, let me just sell those. And our first signs of rain.
So now it's raining, there are certain things that would make it a lot harder to do if you're harvesting or cutting grass or anything like that. If you've got anything that was left out that shouldn't be left out, it could spoil. So you always need to be aware of when it's raining, you can check the weather forecast for that. Um, actually looks more like a thunderstorm than rain. I love the fact that you get storms in this game, it's really cool. Definitely adds to the ambiance. Let's see. These little ones, these little ones are more annoying than anything else. They they barely yield anything of value. I mean, they add up over time, but it's, it's more a case of just getting rid of them. Did I? I didn't cut these two down. I left both of them. Wow. Okay. Just missed them in all the carnage. Oh, so it's 6 p.m. right now. That one up. Okay, so it's this one. Uh, if I can get onto this, I might be able to jump onto it. There we go. Again, some of these branches, they, they really block your vision and make it very hard to see, so... I might even be able to sell that one. I wonder... It did sell. <laughs> nice. It was just in the edge where it fell, so... Ah, oh, that was a bonus. Didn't expect that. These just weigh 127 kilograms there. Almost like dead wood, and you get like 200 liters of tree forest. Barely anything. All right, we're gonna run up here. Thankfully, we didn't damage our building. You can hear that wind howling. You can see the see the storm coming in. But we don't mind. Rain does not bother us. We have a job to do. It is getting dark, so we can turn our flashlight on if we need to be able to see. Now this one is relatively small, but very much blocking our view. We run somewhere in this direction, but I don't actually know where. Yes, there it is. Uh, I'm going to just chuck that on the floor then and get that one out of the way. Okay. This one I think I've already cut. So I can just pick it straight up. Very nice. So already, as you can see, massive, massive improvement in terms of this whole area being cleared. Taking the small ones by hand that I can just get rid of and get out of the way. Twenty-three thousand liters of wood. Perfect. That means we're already going to have some pallets here. Yep, there's three. We we'll get some more there tomorrow. And I think I might be wrong, but I think that is all of the. one's too big, that's a massive one. Oh, there's one there. You can kind of tell, as I said, you can tell the difference between the, the small small spruce trees. That one's actually trapped underneath, so I can't actually get that one out. I could if I just cut it. If I cut it, I'm going to just lose the end anyway, but it's fine. Alright, and it's starting to get dark, so I think that's us for the day. We've done as much as we needed to do. We've definitely prepped the area well. So what we need to do now next month is we'll need to remove the rest of these trees, deal with all of these tree stumps, get rid of that, and that is going to allow us to move on to the next stage of what we need to do, which is putting those greenhouses down. Alright, let's um, 
take the tractor. And we're actually going to take the tractor up to the top so it's at the shop ready because that's where we want to be to get our next attachment. Now the rain would normally ruin the grass but because the grass is already wrapped it's completely impervious to the rain. And these boughs are now at 43% so they're almost done. So we're going to drive the tractor up to the shop, park the tractor there for the night, we'll bring the car back down which we wanted to do before. We could actually, oh no, I was going to say, we could have taken a, we wanted it to be very efficient, we could have taken a log with us and sold it, made a little bit more money. Um, but overall it's not too much of a problem. If we wanted to press escape, um, we're not in a rush anymore, there's no stress anymore, we're not under pressure. We click on finance tab, we see that in August we actually spent 47000 We had a little bit of income by selling some wood, but most of it was just wages, fuel, um, there was obviously uh, a lot of money there on new vehicles, construction, and, uh, and the leasing and the running. So a lot of costs there. Then in September, more construction costs, building the uh, sawmill, uh, more leasing. We did make a bit of money um, from selling some wood, um, some fertilizer that we bought. So again, as you can see, quite a lot of money that we spent out so far, but tomorrow, Tomorrow is pretty much going to be the, the last of it. There's... Oh, we've got the weight here. We actually... I want to put the weight... Okay, let me think about how I'm going to do this. Um, oh, I should have left the weight behind. Because I'm going to have... I'm going to be pulling. And I'm going to be pushing. So I need... I've got two attachments. So what we want to do is we want to get the mulcher. Mulcher is one thing we're going to want. But also, we need to get a water tanker. So the reason we need a water tanker is the greenhouse needs water. So we need to get the water. We need to take the water from the water source and put it into the greenhouse. So we need a water tanker. Now, it makes absolute sense for us to buy a water tanker rather than to lease one. Because for us, we're going to be using it every day. So again, lease is good if it's just temp temporary. If you're going to use it every day, you want to use to look to buy it. And the good news is that for the water tanker, we don't need a huge water tanker. We can actually get away with a basic small water tanker. Now, we'll actually buy it tomorrow. And in a in the perfect world, there'll be one on sale in the shop. And but it's probably not going to happen, so that's absolutely fine. So we'll leave the weight here. And we'll come back for that later. There we go. And then we're going to leave the tractor here for the night. So that's uh, that's now ready to go. All right, so we can turn the lights off, and we can jump into our. Oh. So you jump into our car. So tomorrow we're going to look to buy the water tanker, we're also going to look to lease the mulcher because we only need the mulcher temporarily to clean the, um, the area. I'll show you how you can use it to remove bushes and also we'll get rid of all of those tree stumps. We're going to go around the entire area, everywhere we've cut down a tree so far, we're going to use that to, uh, to remove the tree stumps. And we've, we've pretty much covered most of the area in terms of trees. There's still the area around the lake. But for now, that's that's not an area we need to focus on. That's an area we can leave for now. We, we can come back to that later. But in terms of our plot of land, every other tree that is not around the lake, we've pretty much cleared. Anything that's in our way, we've cleared. And so that's us for the night. We're now done. We can park this up. We actually do need to get some petrol at some point, but for now, okay. Right, home sweet home. So we're we'll just heading doors. There is something else missing here which we'll buy soon. I'm not going to spoil that. I'll tell you what else. There's a tree in my house apparently. Nice. I like it. Adds to the uh, decor. 
So before we log off for the night, let's just have a quick look. So in the shop, oh, there are some items in the shop. We don't need that. We do definitely want a telehandler, but that one is not really the one we want. I have one that I have my eye on. We'll get that later. So what we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to, first of all, we need to buy a trailer. So if we look at trailers, not these trailers, um, the... Is it? Yes, it's in animals. For some reason, it's in animals. So this is a forage mixer. This uh, tanks that transport liquids. So this one is a water tank. It costs 3,000, but it only holds 2,000 liters, which isn't really a lot. This one holds 6,000 liters. It's a little bit more money, also for water. This one holds 7,300 liters, and this one holds 8,000 liters. But this one allows you to transfer multiple items. So you can transfer liquid fertilizer, um, pesticides, water. It gives you more options. This one obviously much bigger. Now, we don't have 25,000 to spend at the moment. So we need to look at something more cost effective. 3,000 is really not a lot. That's not a lot at all. And, and I'd, I'd try and avoid that if we can help it. Maybe we'll go for something like the 8,000 option just to get this. But if we can, maybe we'll go for the seven, uh, the nine and a half. For the extra one and a half, we get an extra thousand liters. Um, so this, this looks like the one we're probably going to end up going for as a starting point. So we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to buy this. And we can go ahead and we can buy this now. We could wait for the morning, see if there's anything on deal. Um, but this is probably what we're going to buy, just as a standard. So that's going to cost us nine and a half thousand. The next thing that we're going to need is the mulcher. The mulcher comes under the forestry equipment. So forestry equipment, and this is the mulcher we want. Now we would love to buy this. This is a great item to have, and eventually we will buy this. This item, it says forestry mulcher can be used to remove tree stumps and bushes. So we can lease this, and it's going to cost us $1,200. we will do that tomorrow. That will be tomorrow's job. So tomorrow we're going to hire that, put it on the front. The tanker we'll buy, we'll put on the back. And the only reason we're not buying a tanker now is in case, in a small chance, it's on sale in the morning in the shop. And, and that's it. We're going to get the water, we're going to get the mulcher, we're going to clean up all of the trees, and then we're going to put our greenhouses down. We need to buy the greenhouse as well. And we also need to buy another trailer which we'll do later. And the, the other trailer that we're going to buy is probably going to be something like this one here. This is going to allow us to uh, carry pallets. So we'll probably try to buy this if we can, um, because this again, we'll be using it every day. But if not, it's fine. We don't need it for now. But in an ideal world, we do need a trailer. So maybe we'll go for something like this. And that's it. That's it for the day. We're done. It's a, a shorter video today. We obviously had a longer one yesterday, a bit of a shorter one today. So Thank you very much for joining me. Sorry we missed the first hour of the game, but uh, hopefully we're all caught up now. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Speak to you soon.